Hey guys, 2015 is almost up, and so it's time to have a look back at the best Kickstarter projects of this year. We've picked 10 really great games that you should be following in the coming years, but as with the nature of these lists, we've had to leave out some top games. So first, here's a few honourable mentions. Brain Schemes' latest addition to the Shadowrun franchise, Shadowrun Hong Kong, wasn't just funded but also released this year, so you can play it now. Sort of like the Banner Saga in the desert, Tahira charts the story of a civilization that once roamed the stars, but has now fallen into a medieval dark age. Douglas Circumstance is a fantastic 8-bit error inspired platformer from the two creators of Dropsy the Clown. With Divinity Original Sin 2, 2014's best RPG is getting a sequel. It's that simple. We've played the Wildfire Alpha and really enjoyed the creative ways this action platformer uses the elements of fire, water and grass. Think Minecraft, but more realistic and with more collaborative world building that begins in the Stone Age and ends up high in the stars. Regrettably, we didn't cover Indivisible during the year but this RPG from the Skullgirls team looks most exciting. Now it's time to find out which games we picked. We had a lot of fun reflecting on all these games, and we hope you do too. General, we've located the base where they're holding the hostages. It's still news in the gaming world and a live project, but there's really no way we could leave Psychonauts 2 out of this video. The main concept of entering other people's minds and literally fighting their inner demons worked really well in the original and it'll be great to see it explored further in the sequel. Not to mention, we're going to get whole new dream worlds to explore. Psychonauts 2 still needs to get funded, and even if all goes well, we won't see it until the back end of 2018. But having already waited 10 years for this, another 3 won't hurt us. Its Kickstarter campaign may have been all the way back in January, but we sure haven't forgotten about Drift Stage and its crazy colours. This homage to arcade races of the late 80s and early 90s is welcoming to the casual play with its simple controls, whilst also appealing to the more serious racer with advanced techniques to shave seconds off your lap time. There are currently 9 awesome looking retro cars, both online and local multiplayer support, and heaps of different modes to try. If you want, you can still get on the bandwagon by taking a demo out for a spin. In comparison to all the other games on this list, this MMO stands out as the most ambitious and complex. Crowfall's driving idea is that your character is permanent, but the game worlds are not. You choose a world to play in, as well as a faction, and then adventure in it until it expires in 1-3 to three months. Each world will be randomly generated, and also have different rules, such as certain character races being banned. In all, the purpose of these worlds is to regenerate the game and keep it constantly fresh unlike any other MMO does. But that's only scratching the surface of Crowfall. To find out more, check out this video's description for some useful links. In the age of the point and click renaissance, Star Mazer promises to be the sexiest of them all. Its art is perfect to the pixel, its music is chipped to heaven, and the world is full of seedy outposts and colourful characters. Speaking of characters, you play as Brick M. Stonewood, a real man's man, who's just awoken after 150 years frozen in time. The story follows his quest to uncover the past, and has multiple endings depending on your choices. Also, as you can obviously see from the trailer, Star Mazer isn't just a point and click adventure, but an old school shoot em up as well. With its blend of action and snazzy presentation, Star Mazer is sure to make your taste buds tickle. This is the Bergson's house. On the beautiful, magnificent outskirts of Mount Mortar. Children of Mortar is a narrative driven roguelike that centers on the Bergsons, the Bergsons a family that has guarded Mount Mortar generations. for generations. For a while now, they have watched over the mountain in peace, but the sudden arrival of an evil force has moved Born them to action. To the Taking the control of the family, it's up to you to explore the mountain, uncover its secrets, and stop in evil in its tracks. At the start of every playthrough, you choose which family member to be. There's the father John, who's a strong warrior, the only daughter Linda, a nimble archer, the elder son Mark, a martial arts expert, as well as a few others. We can't speak for you guys, but we sure can't wait to meet the Bergsons. Until You're a 
dog, lost on a giant procedurally generated city. How are you going to find food to stay alive? Being incapable of speech, you obviously can't ask humans for help, but you can beg or do a trick to earn a treat from them. But maybe you don't want to perform for others, instead you might just follow an unsuspecting human and snatch that slice of pizza from their hands when the opportunity arises. Then again, you could always leave humans out of it, and forage for scraps in bins. Home Free isn't just a game about being a dog, it's about the choices you make, and the kind of dog that makes you. Darksiders creator Joe Madureira used to make a popular comic book series called Battle Chasers at the turn of the century, and now he's turning it into a traditional RPG with Battle Chasers Night War. In it, you'll get to lead iconic characters Gully, Garrison, Monica, Nolan, and Calabretto through randomized dungeons and turn-based combat. The story will serve as a companion to the comics and be told via lore scattered throughout the world, as well as classically illustrated cutscenes. The music seems to be spot on too, with the few pieces we've heard simply blowing us away. You have to admit, Battle Chasers looks amazing, and we're sure the JRPG gameplay will deliver also. Everyone in Wellington Wells is doing exactly what he or she ought to. Smiling and laughing and taking their joy. We Happy Few is a creepy survival game set in a dystopian city in 1960s England. Within it, all the people are on a drug called Joy, effectively turning them into a mob of nutjobs bent on converting anyone else to Joy. Being free of the drug, you're under threat, but also have the chance to escape. Going undetected will be the key to doing so with most folk not noticing you unless you do anything out of the ordinary, like break into their homes. But that may just be where you need to go to find the items you need to craft your way out of town. Spooky, groovy and challenging, We Happy Few appears to be a genuinely unique take on survival horror. Little Devil Inside got our attention with its looks, but won us over with its promise of exploration. As a college professor come Monster Hunter, you'll travel to sun-glazed deserts, echoing labyrinths and lush forest seclusions to hunt down magnificent creatures. The great thing about travelling is that you have to hop on a train, boat or some kind of transport and actually get yourself there. These journeys can be dangerous too, so you might just have to hop on a turret to ensure safe passage. Every mission is different, and so you should prepare for them accordingly by assembling the right crew and gear. Once you get into fights, you'll also find that the combat system is plenty deep. We aren't ranking these games, but if we had to pick the one we're most excited about, it'd be this little devil. We thought we'd keep everyone on edge by leaving ukulele to last, but here it is, the great spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie. With ex-rare employees who worked on the original Banjo, as well as Donkey Kong Country at the helm, there's a lot of anticipation as well as expectation for this project. What to expect is a return to the early days of 3D gaming and the open world platforms they produced, a whole load of collectibles to collect, and googly eyes slapped onto every character. It'll basically be Banjo, just with a chameleon and bat, rather than a bear and a bird. The plan is for the game to come out next October. So if all bodes well, we'll be playing it in less than 12 months. Well guys, we hope all those games have got you pumped for the future. We'll be back soon with our last video of the year, the big one, our top 10 indie games of 2015. See you guys soon.